doing and has done in his life, and we just celebrate him. Uh, Brother Charles, amen. Happy birthday wherever you are. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. And then the, the other, the other it's a, it's a, I say it's a global holiday. It's a national global holiday. Amen, y'all. Y'all give it up. It's my mama's birthday, y'all. Y'all give it up for my mama. Amen. Y'all better, y'all better thank the Lord for my mama. Amen. Because I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be up here doing this if it wasn't for her. And so I'm, I'm thankful. I always tell the story. I, I tried my best. I used to go to the house party. Y'all don't remember house parties. I used to go to the house parties. How, Paula, you was at some of them house parties. Don't trip. At the, <laughs> at the house parties. And, and, my, and I would hear a horn blow. And I... <laughs> Brother Keith, the horn, so I hear a horn out there, and I look out there, and it's my mama out there. Tell me, it's time for you to go. <laughs> Ooh, I used to be like, oh, well, I got to go, y'all. <laughs> but I thank God for her consistency, her faithfulness, her example. And so I, we just celebrate on this amazing birthday. Amen. Amen. And anyone else that's got a birthday going on, we celebrate you. Amen. We, got, we bless God for you. Joel chapter 2, the book of Joel chapter 2, verse number 26. Let's go straight to the word and we're going to see what the Lord is saying today. Joel chapter 2, um, verse number 26. And it reads as thus. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. <laughs> that, that alone right there is enough to shout about. <clears throat> that alone enough, we can just say, okay, I got that. We can go home right there. <laughs> will never be again put to shame. It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Even the male and the female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Um, I believe that we are in a moment, we talked about last week, that we have to maximize this season and that we are in a season of harvest that God wants us to come into a place where we begin to gather from the seeds that we have planted in our lives um, and that we are in a time of harvest. But with that harvest, you have to understand that there is always a time in history when God opens heaven and begins to pour out his spirit. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and, and the fact is this, it's not that God <clears throat> has not poured out, poured out his spirit. It's not that God has not moved. It's not that God has not opened up the heavens. It is that oftentimes throughout the process of time, we become callous and not see what God is doing. And we miss the season that God has moved us into. Somebody say amen. Uh -huh. Yeah, we miss the season that God is, is moving the church into, moving the body of Christ into, moving the world into because oftentimes it's not a fact that God didn't do it. We're just not aware of what God has done. Um, I was talking to Bishop Jamie Englehart a couple of days ago, and he said, God's already done the thing, the revival, the movement, the reformation. It's already happened, the awakening. He said, but it's time for us to experience it. Whew, God, and I, I wonder if I got maybe 20 people that say I'm ready to experience what God is doing. Hey, glory to God. Uh, I believe God is pouring out his spirit at levels that we've never seen before. He's doing a thing, a new thing. We're in a new season. We're in a new moment. We're in a new time. Uh, uh, and, I, and I'm in a place that I'm like Paul Morton. God, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. 
I, I want to be right there in your will, right there in your way, right there in your system, right there in your strategy. Whatever you're saying, God, this is where I want to be. This is what I want to do. God, I, don't, I only want to do what you do. I only want to say what you say. I want to be in alignment with your will, with your way, with your word, with your wind. Wherever you're blowing, wherever you're breathing, I want to be right there where you're breathing. I don't want to be out of your will. I want to be right in the will of God. Do I have anybody? You just want to be right in the will of God. I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't want to play around with this thing. I don't I don't I don't believe we have time to play around with this thing. We have to we have to step into what God wants to do in this hour and in this season. We have to move into it. We have to lean into it. We can't hold back. There's a moment in time now that we're in that holding back don't work anymore. I can't hold back. I can't let anything stop me. I can't let offense stop me. I can't let my perception of things stop me. I've got to come into a place right now that I say, God, whatever you're doing in this season, I may not understand it all, but I want to be in alignment with your season. I don't want to get moved out of the wheel. I don't want to get distracted out of the will of God. I want to be right where you are. Do I have just 15 people that can act like today you want to be where he is? God, whoa, whoa, whoa God. Okay, y'all sit down. I just want to be where you are. I just want to be, be where you are because God is, there is a move, there is a wave, there is a wind. God is blowing in the earth right now. Glory to God. Uh -huh. He's blowing it in the earth and there are many churches that will miss the wind. There are many ministries that will miss the wind. There are many nations that will miss the wind, but I don't know about you. I've come to a place in my life that I decided I will not miss it. I will not miss what God is doing. I will not miss the moment. I I will not miss this hour. I will be in position to, oh God, to feel and to see what it is that God is doing. Somebody say yes. God wants to do something in your spiritual world as well as your natural world. Oftentimes we think that they are two separate things and we believe that it's either I'm going to be blessed in the spirit or I'm going to be blessed in the natural, but I won't be both. But I, I came to let you know that when God blesses you in the spirit realm, he also desires to bless you in the natural realm. In other words, God doesn't want to leave any part of you behind. God doesn't want you to be spiritually rich and naturally broke. Are y'all with me in here? He doesn't want you to be healed in your spirit, but 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 diseased in your natural life. I need to talk to me in here. I need you to talk to me. God is ready for us to become complete. Somebody shout complete. Shout it again. Shout complete. Shout it like you mean it. Shout complete. It is not an either or. It is a both and. That as I grow spiritually, I wish above all things that thou would prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. It is a complete work. I'm talking to somebody that's ready for a complete work. A complete work. That if I'm going to grow in my spirit, I want to grow in my natural world. If I'm going to become stronger in my spirit, I want to become stronger in my natural world. I don't want to win in the spirit and fail in the natural. I, I'm going to say that again. I, I don't want to win in the spirit and fail in the natural. Let me say it one more time. I don't want to win in the spirit and fail in the natural. If I'm going to win in the spirit, I want my marriage to win. If I'm going to win in the spirit, I want my children to win. If I'm going to win in the spirit, I want my finances to win. If I'm going to win in the spirit, I want, I want my bloodline to win. If I'm going to win in the spirit, I want my neighborhood to win. If I'm going to win in the spirit, I want my city to win. If I'm going to win in the spirit, I want every area of my life to win. Because when God repairs one thing, he repairs all things. Woo! Somebody open your mouth and give God a praise. Woo, he wants all, <laughs> he wants all, all of me. We, we say that in this sense of our sacrifice. He wants all of me. He wants all of me. If he can have all of me, he, can, he wants every part of me, and he does. But he doesn't want all of you just to have all of you. He wants all of you so that he can repair and restore all of you. He wants all of you so that he can make all of you brand new. He wants all of you so that he can make all of you whole. I need a church in here. He wants all of you so that he can take all of 
of you to the next level. He wants all of you because if he gets a hold of all of you, then he can use every part of your life for his glory. <laughs> oh, God, there's some of us in here right now, God's been trying to use all of us. And we've allowed everything under the sun to distract us, to hold us back, to keep us from walking in the thing of God, to keep us from moving to the things of God. But I came to let you know that there is a wind blowing. And it, when he blow, ah, as he's blowing this wind and breathing again, he's not just breathing on your spirit. He's breathing on your mind. He's breathing on your emotions. He's breathing on your body. He's breathing on your money. He's breathing on every part of who you are. I need some people to get excited for just 10 seconds and open your mouth and give God a shout like you know he's, oh, he's breathing on me. He's breathing on me. He's breathing on me. I feel it. He's breathing on me. He's breathing on me. Oh, my children will be saved. He's breathing on me. My family will be whole. He's breathing on me. Somebody open your mouth like he's He's free. So now, God hey, hey, yeah, 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 is a God of complete restoration. He deals with your mind. Hey, God. He deals with your body. He deals with your spirit. He deals with your soul. He wants all to trust the Lord, love the Lord with your mind, with your body, with your soul, with everything that is on the inside of it. Love the Lord with everything that is on the inside of it. He wants to restore everything. I need somebody to shout everything. Ah, uh, this word everything has been a prophetic word throughout the nations where I, I, I had the opportunity to say everything at a business conference. And everything in their lives changed at this conference because God wants everything in your life. I need somebody in here to understand that as you walk out of here today, that there is not one area of your life that God is not concerned with. Oh, somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. There is not one area of your life uh, um, that, that God, that God is not concerned with. He is concerned with everything in your life. Somebody shout everything. Uh -huh. Complete restoration. Say complete restoration. Watch this. Complete restoration is the process of taking all damaged parts and restoring them back to the original standard or better. Let me say that again. I'm going to give you that definition again. I got a complete restoration is the process of taking all damaged parts and restoring them back to the original standard or better. One more time because uh, somebody going to get this in the balcony. Watch this. It is complete restoration is the process of taking all damaged parts and restoring them back to the original standard or better. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know about you, but I'm going to choose the better this time. I'm going to choose the better. I got some damaged parts in my life. I got some damaged situations in my life. There's some things I, th th listen, if you're going to be honest, there's some things you damaged. There's some stuff in my life that it was me that damaged. It wasn't, it was me that damaged that thing. It wasn't the devil. It wasn't the imps. It wasn't the demons. It wasn't the spirits. It wasn't all them kind of people. It was me. I did the damage. I made the decision and that decision damaged some areas of my life. But I thank God for a God of complete restoration that he'll take even the stuff I damaged even the stuff I messed up and he'll say don't worry I got you I'm going to bring that back not only to its original state but I'm going to make it better than ever God help me I need some folk in here that you say listen I'm better than ever I'm better than I ever have been before my life might have been jacked up some time ago but I'm better last month it might have been messed up but I'm better than ever right now I feel better I look better I'm stronger I'm oh somebody shout like you are better. That's why some folk can't even recognize you right now because you better, you better, you better, you better. You ain't, huh? I like to say it this way. You ain't an ex nothing. You are better than, you better than you used to be. You're under a better covenant with better promises. I need somebody to shout like you. You ain't an ex drug addict. No, I'm better than what I was. I'm, I'm a new creation. I'm something totally different. I'm something totally new. I'm something that has never been before. Oh! 
Somebody shout better. I need some believers that, that, that just know God is up to something right now to open your mouth for the next 15 seconds and just give God a 15-second praise break like you know. Listen, my life is getting better. I feel it. I feel something getting better. I feel, oh, the enemy thought he had me. I feel stronger right now. Oh, I thought I had me, but I feel stronger right now. Oh, it looked like it was over, but I feel stronger right now. I was about to give up, but I I feel stronger right now. I wanted to throw in the towel, but I feel stronger right now. I went through everything I went through, but right now, I just feel like it's getting better. It's better, it's better, it's better. It's better, it's better, it's better, it's better. Watch this. Sit down. I got to give you this and we, we almost done. Watch. Hey. Uh -huh. The gospel of Christ, the gospel of Christ leads to salvation. And salvation leads to wholeness. Let me give you that again. The gospel of Christ leads to salvation. And salvation leads to wholeness. So if, if it, 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 it's, it's when I hear the gospel concerning Christ that it leads me to salvation. Salvation leads me to wholeness. The reason oftentimes, hear me just real quickly, oftentimes we're not getting to wholeness is because we didn't start with the gospel of Christ. We started with a motivational message, which was beautiful. Oh, that was glorious. Oh, praise the Lord for that. I'm a motivational speaker, so I get it. Awesome. So you, we start with the motivational message. We start with seven points. We start with all of that, but it cannot bring us the wholeness because the only thing that can bring us the wholeness is the gospel concerning Christ. Ah, y'all ain't talking to me in here. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, the, the original translation says, the word concerning Christ. Talk to me in here. Faith, I'm going to say that again. Faith comes by what? And hearing by the word concerning Christ. Are y'all? I'm gonna say it again. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word concerning Christ. So the more I hear the gospel concerning Christ, the more my faith is ah, my faith is built up. The more I hear the gospel concerning Christ, the stronger I get. I need some people in here that get excited about the gospel again. Woo, glory to God. The gospel concerning Christ. There are some people. I'm gonna submit some very strong statements for just a moment. There are some people, I believe, have never heard the gospel because they only heard what not to do, what you can't do, where you shouldn't go, how many times you can't do it, you can't show up here, don't go to the movies, don't wear makeup, don't wear dresses, long dresses and jeans and all that, or short dresses and jeans, whatever. Don't do none of that stuff. You can't be that. You can't say that. You got to look like this. You got to sound like that. You got to, but you ain't heard the gospel because the gospel is a message concerning Christ and the message concerning Christ brings you to salvation and salvation brings you to wholeness. I was in a whole country and I preached the gospel to pastors who came later and said, I never heard the gospel. They said the, mission, the missionaries who came and, and, and what's the word, colonized us uh oh. <laughs> they came and taught us a message that said if we just sit here and, and obey and do these things and give, they talking about redemption offerings. They talking about we got taught that our land is cursed. And if we just give an offering, a redemption offering, it'll break the curse off our land. <laughs> and we were told just to sit back and wait because Jesus is going to come rescue us from our poverty. <sighs> But when I say, wait, 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 let's talk about the finished work of Jesus. Let's talk about the cross. Let's talk about the death, burial, and resurrection. Let's talk about the fact that when the gospel comes, it brings you into salvation, and it brings you into wholeness, and your life will never be the same. I need somebody to shout like we got a gospel-centered church. What is the vision of the church? To preach the gospel to every tongue, to every nation, to every person until this whole earth has heard the gospel of the kingdom. Romans 1 and 6, I got to go. Romans 1 and 6. 
I don't really have to go. I'm just saying that. Romans 1 and 6. Watch Paul. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. He said, I am, I'm going to say it again, not ashamed of the gospel. I will preach the gospel until I can't preach no more. Are y'all hearing me in here? I don't care if anybody get tired of hearing about Jesus. That's on you. I will preach the finished work. I will preach the gospel. I will preach about Christ and Christ crucified. I will preach about a resurrected Savior. I will preach the gospel. Not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. It is the what? It is the what? One more time. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Watch this. Salvation literally means, in the Greek, it means, it's, so, it's soterior. Uh, save means so -so. It's a Greek word, so, so It means to rescue or deliver. To save one suffering, to save one from disease, to make well, to heal, to restore to health. Are you with me in here? I need to make a strong statement. I need y'all to listen very closely. God not only saves you, saves your soul from hell, he saves your life from hell. Y'all miss what I just said. I'm, he not only saves your soul from hell, he saves your life from hell. Because some of us have been delivered from hell, but we still live in hell. Our life is hell. Our marriage is hell. Our children, our relationship with our children is hell. Our job is hell. Everything is hell. Oh, I don't have a church in here today. Woo! You on your way to heaven, but you living in hell right now. And I came to talk to some people in here that understand God's mission is not just to save you from eternal hell, but to save you from hell right now. I don't know if I have anybody that's ready to experience heaven on earth. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. I'm not going to wait until I leave this place before I experience heaven. I am seated with him in heavenly places. I'm going to experience it right now. I need somebody to shout like you. Woo! Yeah, yeah, watch Psalms 160. Hey, 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 hey. I'm almost done. Watch Psalm. We're getting out of here. 1115 today. Psalms 116, verse number three. The song, watch David. The sorrows of death come past me, the pain of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. Woo, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. And I was brought low and he helped me. I don't know who I came to talk to today, but God is here to help you. He's here to help you because you have been compassed all around by nothing but hell. And I came to let all hell know I saw serve you notice this day that you will not consume the people of God you will not consume this church you will not consume the families you will not consume the marriages I came to serve hell notice that, that you are evicted that you have been defeated and you have no place in our I need you to shout in this place Whew. Woo! <laughs> you better shout like you letting you serve in hell notice. Ah, declare right now you don't have a place. You don't have a moment. You don't have space in my life. You don't have space in my mind. You don't have space in my emotions. I'm filling this place up with all that heaven is. I'm driving everything that is not like him out of my life.
He came to help you. Somebody shout, he's my helper. Oh, y'all didn't say it like you mean to say, he's my helper. Woo! <laughs> I came to serve. Notice some of you have been tormented too long. You have been tormented way too long. I don't know who I came for today. You have been tormented way too long. The enemy has tormented you way too long. He's tormented your mind. He's tormented you way too long. I came as an apostle, a prophet of the Lord, and I came to arrest every tormenting spirit. I came to arrest every tormenting devil. I came to arrest every tormenting idea. I came to arrest every tormenting offense that's trying to move you out of position. I came to arrest you right now. And I declare right now by the power of God that you are set free. <laughs> he didn't come just to deliver you from an eternal hell. He came to get you out of the hell you've been living in. I don't know who I'm talking to in this place right now. Woo! He came to get you out of that hell that's been holding you captive for 20 years, for 15 years. He came to get you out of that hell place. I don't know, I don't know why I'm on this right here. He came to pull you out of that pit. Uh, David said he pulled me out of a pit. I don't know who I'm talking to in here, but God came to pull you out of the pit you've been in. You've been in the pit long enough. You've been in the pit too long. It's time for God to pull you out. Somebody shout, he's pulling me out. Come on, say. He's pulling me out. 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 I'm not going to be in the same place ever again. He's pulling me out. Y'all be seated. I'm done. Y'all be seated. <laughs> One of the issues is that most of what we experience is self-inflicted. Y'all know I preach this. The devil's defeated. The enemy is defeated. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. He is, the, he is powerless. Talk to me in here. Whew, glory to God. He's powerless. So much of what we experience is self-inflicted. If you look throughout scripture and you look all throughout the Old Testament specifically, you'll see Israel was always in a moment where God wanted to bless them. God was always trying. He said, I'm bringing you out of Egypt and I'm bringing you into a, I'm bringing it out of Egypt into a land that flows with milk and honey. He, God always had this idea that I'm going to bless you spiritually, but I'm going to bless you naturally at the same time. So I'm not just going to bring you out of sin. I'm going to bring you into a place. I'm not just going to bring you out of bondage, but I'm going to bring you into a place of overflow. I'm not, ah, God, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We become masters with the liberation theology. We become masters of getting out of things, but we don't, we don't really do well at getting into things. We, yeah, we are masters of getting you out of something. We have whole conferences on getting out, getting out, your day of getting out. You're about to come out. This is your getting out day, getting out. And a lot of people got out of a whole lot of stuff. And some people came out and because no one brought them into something, they came out into perversion. Did I, uh oh, hold on. Okay, yeah, uh -huh, yeah. I'm not bound anymore. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not manipulated anymore. I'm not controlled anymore. But because I didn't know what to come into, I just came out. And, and, and because I didn't know what to identify with, I just came out. Uh, Y'all ain't going to talk to me in here. This is getting rough. It's getting rough around through here. And, and so what I know is that God says, I don't want to just bring you out of Egypt. I want to give you identity. I want to bring you into a land, God, that flows with milk and honey. I want to be your God. And I want you to be my people. I want to dwell with you. I want to sup with you. I want to have communication with you. I want to have relationship with you. I don't want you just to come out of that. Ah! I want you to come into the place that I've designed for you. I'm talking to somebody in here today, and I'm letting you know I prophesied the door has been broke open for you. And it's time for you to walk into the thing God has for you. Israel were always in this place of, of this cycle, going back and forth. 
God will say, I'm bringing you out. Whoo, glory. They, they'll come out. They came out of Egypt. And, they, and, they're, and, they're in, and they're going to Canaan, the land flowing milk honey. And they get into the wilderness and they start complaining. It was self-inflicted. Forty years self-inflicted. <laughs> the 40 years was not the will of God. <laughs> they were, they were, it was self-inflicted. And because their mind wasn't ready, the only, listen, the only reason they ever went through the wilderness is because he said, well, let me take them through the wilderness for a few days. Because if they go straight into battle, they're going to run back to Egypt. <laughs> yeah. Because sometimes God brings you in the wilderness because he knows you're not ready for the battle. You, you ain't ready to face that obstacle yet. You're not ready to face that giant. You're not ready to face that thing yet. So what I'm going to do is take you in the wilderness. But we, com we complain about the wilderness when the wilderness is actually a training ground. It's actually development. It's actually preparation. It's actually getting you ready for what God has for you. He says, I got the land of milk and honey for you, but there's some things that you're going to have to overcome when you get there that you ain't ready for yet. So I'll just take you to the wilderness. Now, this is only supposed to be a few days. I'll take you through the wilderness. But you get there and you start complaining, and 40 years goes by. <sighs> and then we get spiritual and say, I'm just waiting on God. God said, no, I'm waiting on you. I'm, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting on you to stop complaining. I'm waiting on you to stop mummering. I'm waiting on you to stop looking at everything that don't look the way you wanted to look and you got something to say about it. I'm waiting on you to get yourself together because the moment you get yourself together, we about to go somewhere. There's about to be something that happened. But as long as you get distracted by your complaints, I can't bring you into the land that flows with milk and honey. I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of going through. I'm tired of having all this stuff. He said, well, if you keep talking about it and you get in my will and my way, we're going to bring you into this thing. But it's 40 years, 40 years in the same cycle, 40 years going through the same stuff, 40 years in the same pain, 40 years in the same disappointment, 40 years. Finally, we get out of Egypt. We gotta, we get, we go through the wilderness. Okay, Joshua, boom, takes them over. All right, we're going over the mountain thing, and the, the river, the, the red, the, y'all know what I'm talking about. The Jordan. There we go. We're going over the Jordan. Okay, we we fight in the battle, and we, okay, we win over there uh, when we knock the walls down, the walls of Jericho. We win over there, but then we get, we get, we get beside ourselves again, and God gives us instructions, and we disobey, and now we're in Babylonian captivity. Are y'all with me? All oh, self-inflicted. Never was the will of God for you to be in that captivity. But because you <laughs> chose to do it your way and not God's way, now you're in a captivity to a thing and a system that God never, I don't know, are y'all in here? That God never designed for you to be in captivity to. I'm now, now in Babylonian captivity. And finally God says, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you out of that. And you go into Assyrian captivity. Because of your same disobedience, self-inflicted. Yeah. And then we love, we love quoting. God, he says, I know the plans I have for you. Jeremiah 20, 11. The thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, of an expected end. But what we don't realize is that word came out of 70 years of captivity. Because of the, the disobedience of Israel. <laughs> Y'all don't want to talk to me. They disobeyed God, ended up in captivity. And God says, listen, I still have a plan for you. I still have a thought that I think towards you. I still want you to come into a good place. I have an expected end for you. But you're going to have to turn to me so that we can get you into the place that you want to be. I don't know who I'm talking to in here, but we've been looking at a whole lot of stuff. We've been, uh, we've been distracted by a whole lot of stuff. And God is saying, if y'all just turn and look at, focus on me. Don't focus on every other thing. Focus on me. Don't focus on what everybody else is doing. Focus on me. Don't focus on what it looks like. Or focus on me. If you focus on me, I can get you out of the captivity. Whew. Israel's constantly going through this battle. They turn to God. They turn from God. They turn to God and they turn to idols. Oh, gosh. 
they start worshiping God, but then the idols look good. They had, they're in this constant cycle, this constant battle, this constant situation, this constant moment. Samuel says, uh, Samuel says he wants to be your God. And they say, but we want a king like everybody else. They say, if we can just do things like everybody else does it. And God says, I, that's not my will for your life to have a king. But, you know, since you're going to pray that way, I'm going to give you what you prayed for. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> that sometimes God says, well, since you want it so bad, I'll let you have it. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't ready. Since you want it so bad, that ain't my will for you. But since you've been crying and on your face and all that stuff, I'm going to let you have it. And God will let you settle at the level of your expectation. Y'all about to make me go crazy up in here. Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll let you settle at the level of your expectation. He'll let you settle at the level of your desire. If you desire it that bad, that's why some relationships are jacked up. You wanted it so bad. God said, I. Right. Now you're in Babylonian captivity. You're in the Assyrian captivity. Y'all ain't going to talk to me in here. Y'all, are y'all ready in here? You in a Syrian captivity because you, you, you want to do it your way. God says, no, 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 you got to do it my way. If you do it my way, I'll get you. Is there anybody ready to get to what God has for you? You ready to see the thing God wants for you? I don't know. I don't, y'all don't sound like it. You ready to say, listen, God, whatever I got to move, whatever I got to let go, whatever I got to sacrifice, whatever it is in this season, God, I'm willing to do it because I want to be right where you are. But what I love about God is that no matter what state you're in, this is the grace. This is the good, this is the good stuff right here. That he always has a plan of restoration. Yeah. Thank you, three people. Uh-huh. Every it doesn't, it doesn't matter the state you're in. It doesn't matter what happened. It doesn't matter if it's your fault, somebody else. It doesn't matter. God always has a plan of restoration. Glory to God. Even when Adam and Eve fell, he already had a plan. <laughs> he, said, he, said, he, said, he said the lamb in Revelation says the lamb was slain before the foundations of the world. In other words, God says, I'm going to put these people on this earth. Now, if they're going to eat that apple, I already got a plan. That fig, it was really a fig. If they're going to eat the fruit, I got a plan. Because he always has a plan for your restoration. Somebody look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor he has a plan for your restoration. Woo! Oh, God. He has a plan for your restoration. You just have to begin to learn and follow the plan of restoration of God. God wants to restore America. I don't know if you know this, but America is a godless country right now. America is no longer a Christian nation, a kingdom nation. But I'm telling you, God wants wants to restore America right now, but we have to follow the plan that he has. He wants to revive, reform, awaken this nation, but we have to follow the plan of God. We got to stop operating like Babylon and begin to operate like the kingdom. I don't have nobody in here. This stuff is too hard today. We got to start operating like the kingdom of heaven in the earth. The church has to stop operating like Babylon. Oh, God, it's too much. Okay. Israel is going through this, this, this moment, and they keep going back and forth. Captivity, obey, disobey, obey, disobey. It's self-inflicted. We serve God. Uh, well, we're going to serve the idols of, of, of the other countries and other nations. Okay. We love, we love God, but, but we want to be independent, and we want to be free thinkers and free spirited, and we want to do all that. I love, I love, oh, we, I worship him, I'm, but, but I don't want to call him God, Jehovah, the God of the land, the God of all gods. I want to call him a spirit. Oh, so I'm, I'll just be spiritual. I'm, 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 I'm spiritual. I'm spiritual. I'm spiritual. God says, I want to move in your life. I, I want to, uh, yeah, I, I would like God to move, but I want to see something. So let me light this incense. Uh-oh. <laughs> because I want to I take the incense and cleanse the atmosphere. <laughs> Let me take these bells and ring these bells so the vibration of the sound can drive out anything evil. 
But I don't know about you, but I got a, a Holy Ghost on the inside of me. I don't need no candle. I don't need no smell. I don't need no bells. I know how to tap into a thing on the inside of me that everything that tries to come up against my house, I can stand in command by the power of the Holy Ghost. You got to go right now in the name of Jesus Almighty. I, I don't need no assistance from no external stuff. Greater is he. That is on the inside of me than he that is in the world. I got the great, if God be for me, then who can be against me? Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Let's go home. <laughs> go, we're going home. Israel did all the same stuff, y'all. This stuff ain't new. Y'all understand, understand what I'm saying? This stuff ain't new. Israel did the same stuff. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Israel had the same issues. Ain't nothing new under the sun. We act like this stuff is new. We already seen the results of Israel. <laughs> Israel turned to other gods. We saw that. Israel became spirited. We saw that. We saw all the Israel lit incense and candles and all of that. We saw all of that and none of that worked. So, Joel is now prophesying of the crisis of Israel. He says, you're not getting a harvest. You're not getting a harvest because you have turned from God. And you have decided to do your own thing and your own way and your own system and all of that. You have turned. And so, you're, you're, so, and so nothing's growing in your land. <laughs> the fruit are not growing. The grapes are not growing. And so you're not experiencing the harvest at the level you need to experience the harvest. Are y'all with me in here? And so God begins to give them instruction because he's ready to pour out his spirit. He's ready to give them the key of how he's going to pour his spirit out in the earth. Are y'all with me in here? And so he begins to tell them, number one, call a solemn fast. <laughs> Understand, not a fast to get God to move. Because fasting does not move God. But fasting refocuses you. And there are some of us in here that can stand to fast. Oh, it got quiet. See, y'all were shouting. Apostle, they were shouting a minute ago. They were, ah! Yeah, some of us can stand to fast. Talk to me in here. I, I'm going to say it again because we don't talk about this enough. Some of us can stand to fast because we need to refocus our life. Talk to me in here. We need somebody shall refocus your life. We can stand the fast because we're making decisions that are based on our own. My wife talks about this pleasure versus purpose. More people are moved by pleasure than they are purpose. Uh, Y'all ain't ready for me. I'm about to go crazy in here. Yeah. Yeah, we're pursuing pleasure more than purpose. In Joel chapter 1, he begins to talk about the canker worm, the parma worm, uh, all of the locusts that were devouring the land. Locusts are a symbol of consumerism. Consumerism is to be fulfilled by pleasure. So Israel was being consumed by the locust of consumerism. In other words, I, I want it like Burger King. I want to have it my way. <laughs> God, I need you to make the burger like I want the burger made. I don't want it. I don't care how you, I don't I know you got a healthier version of it, but I want it the way I want it. I want to do it the way I, I want to do it. Some of us need to call a solemn fast. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all. Y'all better keep shouting right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need it. Because consumerism, um, uh, um, the Bible talks in Joel chapter 1, it says the problem with Israel is they had become intoxicated with drink. They had become drunk, drunkards. Uh, oh, y'all, y'all, come on, stay with me. They had be, that's what it says, they had become drunkards. And, and when you read it, that word, it, it is the word, it is the word, uh, um, uh, shikra, it means to, it means to, it means to be intoxicated. Uh -huh. Intoxication means to be disoriented. And so what I'm finding 
finding is that many people in the body of Christ are making disoriented decisions because we have been intoxicated by our own desire of pleasure. I'm about to throw the mic. Woo. We're intoxicated by our need to be pleased. And so we make decisions. People leave the church out of disorientation because they got intoxicated by stuff that was being put in the atmosphere that we allowed to distract us and intoxicate us and move us and cause us to make disoriented decisions. And now I'm just moving based on pleasure and not based on purpose. I'm talking good. I hope y'all still in here. I'm looking for some people in here to say, listen, I got some needs, but I want to make sure I'm in the will of God and I'm walking in purpose, that whatever I connect to is purpose, that whatever I do is purpose, that whatever job I go to is purpose, whatever business I launch is purpose. I'm not doing anything because I just want to be pleased. I'm doing this because he's pleased. And oh, are y'all in here? My faith will please God in this season. I need y'all to shout like y'all still in here. I know this is a little rough right around here. Since they were intoxicated, they were intoxicated. They got drunk. They were drunk, drunkards. <laughs> so God has to, as a matter of fact, if you read through the Old Testament, they're always, he's always dealing with the drunkenness of Israel. Always. Go there. 33, there's 33 times he has to deal with their drunkenness. This is why Paul had to come and say, listen, y'all, don't be drunk with wine and access. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. This is why on the day of Pentecost, y'all hear what I'm saying, on the day of Pentecost, when they watched them, they said, oh, they, they drunk. Because they were used to people getting drunk in that time. Are y'all in here? And so they said, something wrong with them. They must be drunk. But what they didn't know is that they didn't got a hold to a new wine. I don't know if I got three people in here, just three, I don't know, that you didn't got a hold to a new wine. There's some, oh, there's something else on the inside of me bubbling up. There's something else on the inside of me that doesn't make me disoriented, but it makes me disciplined. It doesn't make me disoriented, but it gives me direction. It, oh, it doesn't make me disoriented, but it brings brings me into destiny. I need about 20 of y'all to shout like you got the Holy Ghost up in here and you know God's about to lead me into something that I'm... He said, sit down, sit down, sit down. Y'all making me nervous. He said, y'all better call a fast. Y'all better call a solemn fast and get refocused. Don't, don't make another move until you fast. That's, that's some instruction for somebody in this building right now. Don't you make another move until you fast. Not, not one more move until you fast. We, we were in Africa. They started laughing at us about our fasting. I mean, they, they, they was at the table laughing at us. They said, what kind of fast do you do in America? That is not fasting. That is food selection. I said, food selection, no fruit from, from, from 10 to 5, food selection. No meat from 7 to 9, food selection. I said, we've been in the church for three days with just water. They said, we've been praying because we need God. We need, this, we need God to do. We need to see something in this land. Oh, God. It was all women. It was 40-some-odd women. For three days, they locked themselves in the church with just water. I'm, I'm not telling y'all to do that. I'm just telling y'all the principle. This is the principle I'm talking. Uh, this is the principle. That the principle means, and what I'm saying is, your fasting, I don't know why I'm talking about fasting. Your fasting needs to hurt a little bit. You ain't fasting if it don't hurt a little bit. You ain't, that ain't a fast. If, it, if you ain't feeling it, you ain't fasting. If you, uh, come on somebody, if you just pushing back lunch, that ain't enough. You don't have to eat lunch anyway. Yeah, woo, I'm trying to get us back focused. I'm trying to get us back in a place where we hear the voice of God. I'm trying to get us back in a place where we can hear direction from God and we stop making disoriented decisions. I'm trying to get us into a place that we become filled with everything that he wants again. I'm trying to come to a place that we are aware of his presence at new levels and new dimensions. Something's happening right now. Some of y'all need, I'm on this, I don't know. Some of y'all need to fast. Some of us need to just fast. I'm, I'm on fast, I'm on fast, I'm on fast until it hurts. I'm on fast until I ain't got nothing else but Jesus. Whew. 
I'm going to fast until I get disciplined. I'm going to fast until my mind gets disciplined. I'm going to fast until my emotions get disciplined. I'm, I'm going to push this thing back until I get to a place that all I can do is what they did next, cry out unto the Lord. I can't settle, but I'm going to cry out unto the Lord until he hears me. I'm going to cry out unto the Lord until he answers me. I'm going to cry out unto the Lord until he moves me. I'm going to cry out to the Lord until he shakes me. I'm going to cry out unto the Lord until I get the deliverance I need. I'm going to cry out to the Lord until I feel the wholeness. I'm going to cry out to the Lord until I have an encounter with God. I dare you to take just this 10 seconds and begin to cry out unto the Lord. Cry out to the Lord like you need him to show. I need heaven to open up for me. I need to see the Lord high and lifted up. I need to see him on the throne. I need to experience him. I need to encounter him again. I got distracted. I want to encounter him. I need some people to get hungry again. I'm hungry for his presence. I don't know. We may not have another program at this church, but as long as his presence, shows up in this building that's all I need I'm hungry for him I'm hungry for his will I'm hungry for his way I'm hungry for his word I'm hungry for purpose I'm hungry for the presence of God I need some people that shout and cry out like you done got hungry for him we need a hunger again he said if you hunger and thirst after righteousness you shall be filled I dare you to open your mouth and shout like you hungry Come on, come on, don't stop right there. And then shout like you hungry. Shout like you hungry. I need them. I need them. I need thee. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. Woo! I need you right now. I've tried to have all my self-pleasures and all my selfish things. I've tried to do it within myself. Oh, God, I'm hungry for you right now. I'm, I'm thirsting after you right now. Let them just fill you up again. I dare you to open your mouth. We're missing what God's doing because we're not hungry no more. We're hungry for things going our way. We're hungry for it looking like we want it to look. We're hungry for it to feel like we want it to feel. But I came to talk to a generation of people. I came to talk to a remnant of people that say, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry, God. I just want you to show up. I just want to see you. I'm hungry, God. Oh, that's it. Come on. Just talk to him. Just talk to him right there. Oh, we, oh that, that's the shift right there. That's the shift right there. Yeah, 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 right there. Just cry out to him right there. That's the shift right there. Oh, yeah, just cry out to him right there. Oh, we a generation that'll cry out. We a remnant that'll cry out. We a church that'll cry out. We don't want to be so cute in church that we can't cry out. We don't want to be so offended in church that we can't cry out. We don't want to be so desperate for our own will that we can't cry out. We will cry out to the Lord. Oh! because we know he's a moving God we know he's a gracious God we know he finished the work we know the blood was shed we'll cry out unto the I dare you open your mouth what he says hey ta retopo koshkinimai he comes in Joel chapter 2. Yeah. And he said, listen, you put this in place, you cry out, you, you consecrate. That's the other thing, you consecrate yourself. Set yourself apart. Whew, you are in the world, but not of the world. Set yourself apart. 
You don't have to think like the world, talk like the world. Set yourself apart. Whew. Whew. Glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Set yourself apart. Set yourself apart. You don't have to look like nobody else. Set yourself apart. This church ain't got to be like no other church. Set yourself apart. Set yourself apart. Consecrate yourself. And he says, don't worry. <laughs> Joel chapter 2. I will restore the years that the locust and the canker worm and the palmer worm have taken from you. He said, if you just put yourself in position, there will be a restoration of the years you lost. There will be a restoration of the years of harvest that you lost. There will be a restoration of the years of rain that you lost. If you put yourself in position to hear from God, there will be a restoration. Some of you right now, you need to put your emotions, your feelings down. You need to put your thoughts down. You need to put that group thing down, sacrifice it at the altar, and just cry out to the Lord and say, God, I'm ready for the years to be restored. I'm, yet, I'm ready for the years that I lost to be restored. The years I lost seeking selfish gain. The years I lost trying to make sure I'm, I get pleased. I wasn't really worried about nothing else. I just wanted to go my way. Those years I lost. Oh, God, I'm sacrificing. I told y'all last week, we're not here to build stages. We're here to build altars. This is not about building a stage. It's about an altar where we can lay some stuff down and we can walk out of here new. We can walk out of here changed. If it's not like God, I'm giving it at the, I'm laying it at the altar. If it does not look like him and I'm putting it at the altar. If it's not in his will, I'm putting it at the altar. I'm getting rid of this thing because I want a move of God in my life. Come on, church, cry out to the Lord right there. Come on, church, cry out to the Lord. Cry out to the Lord. He'll heal you right here. Cry out to the Lord. He'll restore you right here. That's it. Cry out to the Lord. He'll, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He'll activate you right here. Cry out to the Lord. Oh, that's it. That's it. He'll breathe on you right here. Cry out to the Lord. He'll renew you right here. Cry out to the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. He'll make you whole. Cry out to the Lord. He'll set you free. Come on. I'm talking 60 seconds. Just cry. sacrifice of praise, a sacrifice of worship. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open up and say, God, heal me. Heal my mind. Heal my body. Heal my soul. Heal my spirit. Woo! You can have all of me. You can have every bit of who I am. I sacrifice my desire at the altar. I sacrifice my passion at the altar. I sacrifice my pleasure at the altar. I just want you in this moment. I just want you to show up and restore the years. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, I dare you push right here. Some of us haven't cried out to the Lord in years. This is your opportunity to open up and let them restore. You haven't had an encounter in years. It's your moment to open up and let him restore you. Stay strong. Come on, 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds, cry out. He said, I will restore unto you the years that the locust, the canker worm, the papa worm, I'll restore unto you the years. You've been in drought for years. I'm restoring unto you the years. You've been in famine for years. I'm restoring unto the, you the years. Woo. 
Whoa. Come on, that's it. A few more moments. Come on. Come here. Yeah, come here. Whoa. Whoa. Come here. Right here. Come here. Come here. Whoa. Just lift your hands. God's about to, he's about to fill you. Woo. He's about to fill you. That longing, that desire, today, God says, I'm about to take it to the next level. He's about to fill you. Woo, just lift your hands. This is a sign of surrender. As a sign of surrender, just lift your hands. Father God, we thank you for this man of God. We thank you that right now, Father God, that as we lay hands on him, that, Father God, that you will begin to baptize him. Baptize him into your presence, into your spirit. And I declare that everything he's desiring from you, you begin to fill those empty places. You begin to fill those places, Father God, that, that seem like nothing has been able to get into. God, you begin to fill those places. You begin to reconstruct his heart. Oh, reconstruct his mind, Father God. And as we lay hands on him, Father God, it calls heaven to open up in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, and right now, your power, hey, begin to rest with this man of God right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, your power begin to activate in him right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you that the glory of the Lord, the fire of the Holy Ghost, will begin to rest right now in the name of Jesus. And I declare, Father God, by the power of God, just open up the heavens, God, and begin to breathe on this man of God. Begin to breathe on his emotions. Begin to breathe on his mind. Begin to breathe on his pain. Begin to breathe on his setback, God. Breathe on him, Father God. Oh, allow your consuming fire, Father God. Yeah, that's it, to consume him, God. Consume him right now in the name of Jesus. I declare you will never be the same. You will walk in the new creation. You will walk in the finished work. You will walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I think that even you give him evidence and you give him signs right now in the name of Jesus, that you have consumed him in the name of Jesus. Do it, God. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Oh, he's filling you right now. He's filling you right now. He's filling you right now. Those passions that are not like God, we move them now. Every attack of the enemy, we cancel it now. Every attack on your mind, we cancel it now. Every attack on your emotions, we cancel it now. I declare you will rise up and be the man of God that you are designed to be. In the name of Jesus, I need 30 people to shout for this man of God. Shout, shout, shout! Woo. Father God, I thank you, Woo, God, hey. that you are, oh, you are reigniting apostle right now in the name of Jesus. You're breathing on him again, God. Oh, God, but this time a new, fresh anointing, a fresh feel, Father God, right now in the name Oh, I speak to the ministry. I speak to the calling. I speak to the gifting. Ignite again. Ignite again. Like never before. Like never before. Oh, God, begin to breathe on this apostle. Begin to breathe on this man of God. Begin to breathe on this voice. Breathe, 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 breathe again. Shokatabai, Robo Sekatabai, Ratakandabo Shake, Rabada Koshakatabai, Rabababaya Toko, Rabababa, stir up again, 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 stir up again. Come on, I need some worshipers in here. I don't know what you came for, but we came for a move of God. Come on. I dare you to open your mouth right now and worship. 
Worship him. Worship him. Stop singing. Don't sing. Don't sing. I just need you to worship. Worship in this place. Come on, open your mouth and worship. Lift your voice and worship. Woo! I don't know what you came looking for, but I'm here for a move of God. I'm here to watch God work. Woo! Come on, open your mouth. Worship him. Woo! He's pouring out. 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 God, right now, breathe on every marriage in this room, every marriage in this house, every marriage represented. Breathe on that marriage. Breathe on it, God. In the name of Jesus, we cancel the demon of divorce. You are canceled now. And we declare by the power of the Holy Ghost that you breathe in this place, God. Breathe on every marriage. Breathe on every relationship now. In the name of Jesus, do it, God. Breathe, God. Breathe new life. Breathe a refreshing. Breathe, God. In the name of Jesus. I need some worshipers just to worship a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Come on. Come on. Just go to the one and hold it. Hold the one. Come on. Right there. That's it. That's it. And he will restore the years. He will restore the years, the canker worm, the locust, the canker worm, the palmer. He'll restore the years. He'll restore the years. Whoo! Hallelujah. He said in those days. Uh, and then the Bible says there were 120 on the day of Pentecost in the upper room. There was the remnant. While everybody else was doing all the stuff of the day and of the culture, there was a remnant of 120. They said, we're going to come up here and we're going to focus. We're going to focus on the word. We're going to focus. We're going to keep, we're going to do what he said do. He said, go wait in Jerusalem. That's what we're going to do. He said, go to the upper room and hold on and wait and we'll be endued with power. That's what we're going to do. 120 in the upper room. And then there came a sound. of a mighty rushing wind, tongues of clothing fire, clothing fire, and they were filled, the whole house was filled with the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? And they began to speak in unknown other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. And the people in the culture said they must be drunk. And they said, no. He told us in Joel to put away the drunkardness. We ain't drunk. Peter says, I got the answer for you because I read the prophecy. I read what Joel said. I studied what Joel said. In my spiritual imagination, I believe that maybe Peter was reading the text as he was in the upper room. That's just my spiritual imagination. And when he saw it, he said, wait a minute, I just read about that. Wait a minute, I just read about that. I know what this is. Everybody, I got an answer. He said, in the last days, not the last days of the world, the last days of the old system, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. The, son, the, the old men would dream dreams, and the sons and daughters will prophesy. He said, I see something. They're going to have vision. I see something. This is that. Yeah. We are still living in the this is that. Yeah. Woo. And God's ready for you to open up to that. This is what the church has to become. It has to become that. Where people will look and say, wait a minute, something's different. Something's different going on over there. We hear something supernatural. 
They're speaking in the language we understand what is going on right now. And Peter got up, go back and read Acts chapter 2, and he preached the gospel. He said, David, David said, my soul will not remain in hell. For he has delivered me. He said, that was talking about the resurrection of Jesus. Go back and read Acts chapter 2. He preached the gospel. He said, is this Christ that you crucified? He has risen. He preached the gospel. <laughs> and when he preached the gospel, they said, wait a minute. They were pricked in their hearts. And they came running, what do we have to do to be saved? So listen, just be baptized into the authority of Christ for the remission of your sins. Oh, glory to God. And the Bible says this was the greatest church growth strategy ever. They preached the gospel and 3,000 people responded. And they broke the consumerism model. They got rid of everything that they had consumed. Y'all go back and read it, Acts chapter 2. They got rid of everything they had consumed. And it says, and nobody lacked anything. This is what God wants to do in this hour. This is what God wants to do in this season. You can miss this moment if you want to. You can walk away from this moment if you want to. You can get distracted in this moment if you want to. But there is a remnant of people that said the world needs a move. The world needs an awakening. Oklahoma City needs an awakening. This region needs an awakening. We've been doing church so long that we've allowed other groups to come in and infiltrate our city. Y'all don't talk to me. Y'all listen. Are y'all in here? Something. We've had good shouting church so long that we're losing men. that have been looking for identity and they find it in the Hebrewism and, and Pan-African stuff. Oh, y'all don't want to say nothing real in here. Because we taught you how to shout but not how to become. I told you I didn't come to do this church thing to do it like it's been done, to look like it's been looking, to have the same experiences we've been having. I can just go join somewhere if I want to do that. And we got some great things happening in this city. Don't get me wrong. You hear what I'm saying? I want y'all to hear me from my heart. We got some great ministry, great movements happening. Not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I want to see God show up. In this place so big that someone comes in here with cancer and walks out healed. Ah, that someone comes in here strung out and walks out free. That the encounter is so big in this place that poverty is broken. That we begin to transform a city. When you walk in here, you can't walk out the same. Whew. That we disrupt the agenda of hell.
This is that. <laughs> Look at Prophet Joel Spaker. It was done on the day of Pentecost. Now we have to experience it. It's already been done. We have to experience it. Just lift your hands real high. We're going to prepare to get out of here. Father God, I thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing. Father God, I just thank you, God. Oh, God, that you're continual. God, just continue to breathe on this man of God. Thank you, Father God. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, I think you just breathe on the gift. Breathe on the anointing. Breathe on the calling. Breathe. Breathe on him, God. Oh, God. Fresh. Let the fresh wind of heaven just breathe. Ooh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, my, 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 my. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, God. That he will begin to experience levels and dimensions and places and moments that he's never seen before. Breathe in Jesus' name. Father God, we thank you. We honor you, God. Woo. And whatever you're doing in this season, Ignite Church is going to be there. Whatever you're doing in this moment, we're going to be a part of it. Whatever you want to do in Oklahoma City, we're going to be a part of it. We want to be right where you are. So God, thank you. That as the gospel is preached, people will come running. As the gospel is preached, as the kingdom manifests, people will be healed and delivered and set free. These signs shall follow them that believe. No devil, no demon, nothing can stand in this presence. So we thank you, God. That this is even a new moment and a new day. And that you're even refreshing this church, this body of believers. You're breathing on us again. You're breathing on us even at a greater level than the day we started. Today, you're breathing on us again. You're reigniting the hunger. You're reigniting the excitement. You're reigniting the fire again, but on a greater level. We'll see revival, we'll see reformation, we'll see an awakening. Breathe on this city. Breathe on the east side of Oklahoma. Breathe. Breathe, God. Awaken and, and revive and reform, God. Breathe. Woo! Breathe on the south side. Breathe, God. On the north side. Breathe. Breathe on this city, God. Yeah. Woo! Breathe on this city, God. Breathe on this city, God. Breathe. Breathe at the capital, God. Breathe. Breathe, God. Woo! Ay, 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 ay. Breathe. Breathe in the school systems, God. Breathe. Breathe, God. Breathe in the marketplace. Breathe, God. Breathe. Breathe, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You will be glorified. You will be magnified.
This is a move. This is a movement. And God, I thank you that you will breathe on us. In Jesus' name. Put your hands together one more time. Woo! Yeah, that's it. Come on. As a matter of fact, just go on and put a praise on it right there. Come on. Just go on and put a praise on it right there. Just go on and put a praise on it right there. Woo! Oh, hallelujah. Oh. You to go ahead and prepare your offering, prepare your seed. Hallelujah, Jesus. Get your best offering out. As you saw in the video, bring the music down just a little bit. As you saw in the video of the, the lives and the impact that we were able to have in East Africa this a couple of weeks ago in Tanzania. Again, I always say that when you give, you give us the opportunity to go into these regions. Um, this particular trip, we went into two different regions, but there are countless areas that we that are literally begging for us to come into. And not only East Africa, but um, Pakistan and many other India, many other nations are calling. They're they're messaging. They, we want this gospel preached. We want our leaders to be centered around this gospel. And so when you give, you give us the opportunity either to go or to send something or to be a part of something or it just gives us opportunity to reach the nation of the world. It also gives us the opportunity, of course, because we are a local church, to begin to set up ways that we impact our local community. I always say we're a local church with a global mission. Give us an opportunity to affect our local community. So we just want to encourage you in your giving. For some of you, that may be the sacrifice you need to make. Is to trust God with your income. Trust God with your money. Believe God with your money. Hallelujah. My wife's going to tell you how you can give. Don't, don't we, look at y'all. Y'all look at us. We, we, look, we look good. I'm just going to tell y'all we look good. We look, <laughs> we look good. Amen. So we, uh, in our time in Africa, I had, had that made for her. And so, and then had this made. And the one my mama got on, stand up, mama. She, we had that made. My sister and I had that made for her down there. And so, you know, <laughs> look at her. Come on. That's how you do it on your birthday right there. Y'all tell her. That's how, yeah. So, you know, and we just had a great great time there. So get your best gift out, and we're going to tell you how to get it. All right, right now, if you need an envelope, go ahead and raise your hand, and someone will give one. Go ahead, if you need an envelope, raise your hand. Okay, all right, that's one of our first ways to give. The second way is through text to give. You're going to text a number, 855. No, I'm sorry. Woo, I was looking at another number. Um, you're going to text the word give. So let's rewind that back. You're going to text the word give and you're going to text it to the number 833-921-6945. Again, you're going to text the word give to 833-60, uh, oh, sorry, 921-6945. Uh, also, you're going to, um, if you want, you can use Cash App and you can go to dollar sign Ignite Church Global. Again, that is dollar sign Ignite Church Global if you would like to give via Cash App. And so we just like to thank everyone who uh, gives throughout the week, who gives recurring giving. Um, it has been amazing because the testimonies that we receive have been um, just, just, just awesome and miraculous. Amen. So right now what we're going to do is if we can have everyone stand up as we prepare to give. If you've already given online or via Cash App or through text to give, you can go ahead and uh, touch the 
the thingy. I don't know why I've been calling it the thingy. I mean, the offering basket with your phone. So, all right, UK, come up right now. Amen. Amen and amen. What we're going to do right now is we are going to pray over the offering. Uh, Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, for every seed that is sown, Lord God. Father God, I just thank you, Lord God, that those that have um, sat there by faith, Lord God, wanting to give, Lord God. So, God, we just thank you, Lord God, for those that are in different um, processes in their faith journey, Lord God. And, God, I just pray right now, Lord God, that every seed that are sown, Lord God, will be able to become an abundant harvest, Lord God, a soul's being saved, deliverance is taking place, Lord God, a being freed, Lord God, and, and just delivered and healed in Jesus' name, Lord God. Father God, I just pray that the seed, Lord God, would just reach, Lord God, beyond us, Lord God, and to our families, God, and, and, and to our circles, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord, that the word of God, Lord Jesus, will reach into the darkest places, We'll reach into the places that we're hurt. We'll reach into the places where we really scream out for you, Lord God. We'll reach late at night, Lord God, when we feel lonely, Lord God. We'll, we'll reach uh, to us, Lord God, even when we feel like there is no one there. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that your presence is there, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God, that the word, Lord God, let your word be with us, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Before we go, you know, um, our, we've taken two trips to East Africa, to Tanzania. And um, on our first trip, we had a group that was going to go and things happened. And it ended up just being me going. Um, but Mother Darlene really wanted to go on that trip. She was really desiring and we couldn't um, all go, go on the trip. So while we were down there, Mother Darlene, we decided, you know what, because you, you, she was ready to go on the trip. But we wanted to bring you something back directly from Africa. And look, she got, I almost match your dress you got on right now. <laughs> and so it's a scarf that we, we bought out there from, from one of the territories out there. And we just want to just get this to you. Just, just to show you, we really appreciate you. And we know you wanted to go and you'd really desire it. But so we got that for you. God bless you. Amen. Somebody, come on, put your hands together one more time. Amen, amen. And we're going to have Pastor Keely come up for announcements. Amen. Amen. We just got a couple of announcements. You guys know that if you want to get connected to stop by our Connect Center, we would love to connect with you. If, if you are a first-time visitor, um, also, if you want to become a part of the movement of Ignite Church Global, stop by our Connect Center. Would you do that for me? Amen. <laughs> also, we have um, a leadership training this Wednesday. How many leaders do we have in the room? Listen, you may not be a leader in this ministry yet, but we still want you to be a part of this leadership training um, here at Ignite Church Global. We're always trying to elevate us as leaders, and some of us just need to discover the leader on the inside of you. So Ignite Church, um, Ignite You rather, will happen this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. If you are a leader, you know that you are a leader, I want you to join us at uh, zoomwithtory.com right? Zoomwithtory.com. That is the Zoom link. 
and I want you to get connected and be a part of that session. Amen. Also, if you have any prayer requests, I want you to stop by our table as you go out. We love to connect with you. Why do life alone when you can have an Ignite family member walk on that journey with you? So we would love to connect with you in prayer. Stop by that connect table and fill out a card. We would love to pray for you. Also, again, you can volunteer in any capacity here at Ignite Church. Um, we have several ways, the, the host team, the kids team, all of the teams. Stop by our Connect Center and we'll get you connected in that area as well. Lastly, I want you to know that we will be honoring graduates. How many graduates do we got in the room? Listen, I want you, listen, everything, I want you to stop by the Connect Center. I can't say that enough, right? <laughs> and so if you have a kid that has graduated, a kindergartner, if you have um, a, a teenager that has graduated, or if you graduated college, I want you to stop by our Connect Center and sign up. Somebody shout sign up. We want to be able to honor you and honor you well, okay? So be, uh, be sure to go back there and sign up. Oh, my last thing is new believers. How many new believers do we got in the room? Listen, if you are a new believer, we are starting a new believers class on June the 13th, and we want you to get connected to that. I'm going to ask Mom Cheryl if she would stand and wave at, you, wave at the people. This is Mom Cheryl. She is leading that along with a team of people that is ready to get you connected, get you discipled, all of the things, right? And so you want to make sure that you connect with her so that you can get um, involved in that class. And that is all the announcements. Pastor Pat is going to come and she's going to pray us out. Amen, amen. Just stand on your feet. I also want to, as we go this week, that we be very mindful of our uh, Ignite family and that what's going on with each other amen we want to be connected amen so i want you all to know that this week uh ann herbison if raise your hand ann she lost her uncle this week which is like her father he raised her so we want you to give her love we want you to pray for her this week i think the funeral is saturday here in oklahoma city let's show love amen come on family come on family we're family here Amen. And, and I know you see some people that are out. Uh, Miss Juanita, she had a minor surgery this week. Y'all, let's be in prayer for her. Amen. And all those members, people that when you don't see people, it's okay to send them a text or call them and say, how are you doing? Don't just rely on us to do it. You do it. Amen. We want to be a family. Say, hey, I missed you today. I love you. Amen. Amen. Look around. You see who's not here. And we're reaching out, but you can reach out too. Amen. I praise the Lord. So let's be in prayer for, for our families. And if you have something going on in your life, please let us know. We'll be happy to pray and pray with you. We have a powerful prayer team here uh, that will be happy to pray with you or to uh, call you and pray with you, whatever you need. Amen. So we are here for you. Somebody say we're here for you. Amen. Amen. Ignite family is a family, and we want to even be greater connected. The other thing, if you have not invited someone to church, we ask you to invite, invite, invite. How many people in here can invite at least 10 people next week? You might get three. So who will invite somebody next week? Come on, not just invite them, but call them and encourage them to come. Amen. If we do that, we're going to see this house grow. When pastors, uh, the class that pastor is going to be starting on Wednesday night is called 200 plus. Amen. Anybody have any idea what that might mean? That means us as a church, we're going to grow to over 200. Amen. He's going to teach us how to begin to independently speak out and, and compel men and women to come, how to witness, how to, you know, encourage others to come. Amen. So we can grow as a family. Amen. So if you have not got connected and we're about done, if you have not got connected, Kelly told you you can get connected. You have to go to Facebook to Ignite Church Global Community. I, I used to be something else. So Ignite Church Community. And you, you put in there that you want to join. 
And if you're not a member, it's for the whole church now. He said leadership, but he changed it that anybody can get on. Amen? And I thank you for getting on. We never have under 22, 23 people on there, so we thank you. But let's make it 50 to 100. Amen? Come on, come on. Y'all, pastor is powerful, and he's teaching us. Join it, join it. And you have to be, Kelly will have to uh, let you in, but go ahead and do that this week. How many will do that this week? How many are going to be online this week? Raise your hand if you're going to be online this week. Amen? Amen. Miss Adeline, I'm going to help you. She's thinking like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Amen. So let's just pray real quick. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the word that has gone forth today, Father God. We thank you for the power of the word. Amen. We thank you, God, for the new season, for the Pentecost, the season of Pentecost, the season of the anointing over our lives. Father, we thank you for every word that we heard. We will take that word. It will not fall on deaf ears, God, but it will grow. It will grow in our spirits, say God, and it will change our lives. Amen. For Father, we thank you. We ask you to bless the families, the bereaved family this week. God, be with them, comfort them, give them peace in the name of Jesus. We pray those that are not feeling well in their bodies, God, we declare and decree healing right now in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree this week will be a blessed week, a prosperous week in Jesus' name, and no weapon and form to get your people shall prosper. We thank you. Have a blessed week in the Lord. Amen. Amen.